Hello providers and welcome. In this training video, we will provide important information directly from the Bureau of Certification Services to you, providers, to help maintain compliance in your child care facilities. I am Tara Stichter, Certification Bureau Manager with the Pennsylvania Key in partnership with Octel, the Office of Child Development and Early Learning. I'm joined today with Leanne Goodling, Bureau of Certification Services Professional Development Coordinator. Prior to holding this position, Leanne was a CERT rep, and she will be guiding us throughout this training to answer questions relating to the announcement and applicable regulations. I have been in the field of early childhood education for over 30 years, and one of the challenges as a provider was understanding and implementing the regulations for compliance as announcements and updates were released. The purpose of this video training is to provide answers to questions and give clarity on the recently released announcement. I will be asking Leanne questions about the specifics of the announcement and she will give us the answer. In this training video, we will be discussing announcement C-24-01, guidance to identifying toxic plants in the childcare setting released on June 17, 2024. This announcement discusses toxics as it pertains to plants, information on where a provider can find information on plant identification, identifying if a plant is toxic, symptoms of contact with a toxic plant, and information on steps to take if a child encounters a toxic plant. Let's review the discussion section of the announcement. Before bringing a new plant into the indoor or outdoor childcare or play space, the provider should identify the plant and do research to determine if any part of the plant is toxic. If any part of the plant is toxic, it may not be included in the childcare setting. Plants intended to grow a product meant for human consumption containing toxic or poisonous parts, including but not limited to tomato, potato, rhubarb, etc., may be grown and may be accessible to children. Children must be actively supervised by a qualified staff person when having access to such plants. The provider is responsible for identifying all plants currently in both the indoor and outdoor childcare and play spaces, as well as any areas accessible to children inside of the facility. If a plant or any part of the plant is toxic, it must be removed not including the plants that are grown for human consumption that may have parts that are toxic. During each inspection, the certification representative shall assess for toxic plants in all areas of the facility accessible to children, including areas that may be accessible to children, but are not childcare or play space, such as hallways, bathrooms, kitchens, or offices inside of the childcare facility. If a toxic plant is found to be present in the indoor and or outdoor childcare or play space, the provider will be cited. If a toxic plant is found to be accessible to children, including areas that may be accessible to children but are not childcare or play space, such as hallways, bathrooms, kitchens, or offices inside of the childcare facility, the provider will be cited. The certification representative will request a plan of correction from the provider. Let's ask Leanne a few questions to help us better understand the announcement. Hi Leanne, what is this announcement covering? The announcement covers toxic plants in the childcare setting, including indoor and outdoor childcare spaces and play spaces, and any areas inside of the facility accessible to children. Is this new or has something changed with an existing announcement? The announcement is intended to assist providers in maintaining compliance by clarifying the intent of the regulations relating to toxic plants. As previously mentioned, the announcement also includes resources for plant identification, including identifying if a plant is toxic, as well as information about identifying symptoms of contact with a toxic plant and steps to take if a child encounters a toxic plant. Is it okay if I have a toxic plant in my office or kitchen or outside along the edge of the playground fence? The regulations specifically prohibit toxic plants in a childcare space. 
This includes both indoor and outdoor play space and any areas inside of the child care facility that may be accessible to children but are not child care or play space, including hallways, bathrooms, kitchens, or offices. In these spaces, toxic plants, along with all other toxic materials, must be stored in accordance with all regulations under 55 PA Code 3270-66, 3280-66, and 3290-64. Therefore, toxic plants must be kept in a locked area or in an area inaccessible to children. They must be stored away from food and food preparation areas. They must also be used in a way that does not contaminate play services, food, or food preparation areas, and does not constitute a hazard to the children. If a provider has toxic plants in the front of the building where families enter and exit to bring their child into care, do they have to remove them? Only toxic plants observed to be present in indoor or outdoor child care or play spaces will be required to be removed. Toxic plants located inside of the facility in areas accessible to children but not child care or play spaces will be required to be made inaccessible or removed. Toxic plants located in other areas of the facility premises will not be assessed. I don't know the name of the plants in my center. How can I find out if a plant in my center is toxic? Are there any apps that we can use? First, you will need to identify the plant. You can seek the advice of an expert, such as a local garden center, florist, or county extension office. You can upload pictures of the plant using websites or mobile apps to assist in identifying plants. The announcement contains links to free resources. Once a plant is identified, the provider will then need to determine if any part of the plant is toxic. Unfortunately, there is not one specific resource that will identify every toxic plant. However, the announcement contains links to multiple resources that can be used to determine if the identified plant has any toxic components. These resources are included in Appendix A. Please note, providers are not limited to utilizing only the resources in the appendix and should consult multiple different resources to determine if the plant is safe to have in the child care setting. Are tomato plants allowed to be grown in areas accessible to children as a program activity? Plants intended to grow a product meant for human consumption containing toxic or poisonous parts, including but not limited to tomato, potato, and rhubarb plants, may be grown in childcare and play spaces and other areas accessible to children. Children must be actively supervised by a qualified staff person when having access to such plants. What kinds of reactions can happen to a child from a toxic plant? And what should I do if a child has a reaction to a toxic plant that I was not aware of in my center? Reactions to exposure to a toxic plant may include one or more of the following skin irritations, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, watering or burning of the eyes, difficulty breathing, dilated pupils, slow or high pulse, headache, sore throat, drowsiness, swelling or itching, or even death. If a child has a reaction to a toxic plant, or if it is suspected that a child might be having a reaction to a toxic plant, contact the Poison Control Center at 800-222-1222 for guidance pertaining to the steps that should be taken. If possible, save a piece of the plant for identification purposes. In an emergency situation, call 911. Is there a training available for more information on toxic plants and where can I find that? There is a training titled Oopsie Daisies, Plants and Safety in the Classroom. It can be found on the PD registry. If I'm taking children on a walk, field trip, or a hike, there would be no way to know if all of the plants they encounter are toxic. How can I maintain compliance with these requirements while on excursions away from the child care facility? The child care provider is only responsible for maintaining compliance with toxic plants requirements on the facility premises. However, as a reminder, children must be supervised at all times when on excursions away from the facility. If a toxic plant is found in my center that I was not aware of, will I be cited for this? A citation will be issued if the toxic plant is located in either an indoor or outdoor childcare or play space, or in an area accessible to children inside the facility. A citation will also be issued if toxic materials, including plants, are not stored in compliance with 55 PA Code 3270-66, 
3280-66, and 3290-64. If a toxic plant is in a family child care home provider's yard that the children play in, could the provider make it inaccessible rather than having to remove it since spaces are not measured in family child care homes? Yes. Because spaces are not measured in family child care homes, a family child care home provider may make a toxic plant inaccessible to the children where they play outdoors rather than removing it. What is an acceptable plan of correction if I have been cited for toxic plants? If a toxic plant is observed to be in an indoor or outdoor child care or play space, the only acceptable plan of correction will be that the plant is removed from the space. The only exception is that family child care homes may make toxic plants inaccessible in the outdoor play space, as mentioned in the previous answer. If a toxic plant is observed to be accessible to children inside the facility in an area that is not a child care or play space, or otherwise stored in a manner that is not compliant with 55 PA code 3270-66, 3280-66, or 3290-64, you will need to consult with your certification representative to determine an appropriate plan of correction. Thank you so much, Leanne, for helping answer those questions. This information will really help providers to meet and maintain compliance with the toxic plants announcement. If you have questions that were not answered in this training, please reach out to your certification representative and they will be happy to help guide you. Thank you for watching our first training video to help providers understand the purpose of the announcement released.